There is an interesting code in every human being, including yourself and myself, on the way we are supposed to operate. It's basically when you program a computer or when you program a machine to work in some way, you hardwire some things, you put some firmware and some software inside of them. And I think that every human being has this firmware of productivity. In other words, if you are not going to be productive, you are not going to be happy. You're not going to be fulfilled. You're not going to be satisfied. You're not going to have joy. You might try this and that and those and that and this and that until that moment that you come to the level of realizing I have got to be productive. That's when your full joy comes in. And we've been discussing these things. And in today's episode, we're going to continue discussing the importance of productivity. What is the second thing you can do to become a productive human being? Check this out. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. You know, the why of doing something can be a great motivational force. If you know why you're doing the things that you're doing, you will be greatly motivated. And one of the worst answers you can ever give a child is, because I said so. And I know children sometimes can be asking us very many questions and it can be quite tasking and it can be quite worrisome, worrisome. But to say because I said so is not a good answer to give someone anywhere, even if it's a child or an adult. And that's why the reason behind the reason, be, the reason behind the thing that we're doing is important. And someone said that the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And I think the main thing about a human being is productivity. I have said this in the previous episodes that I don't think there is any loftier reason for you and I to be alive today other than to be productive. And I qualified by saying that productivity is not necessarily giving birth to children. That is far from it. When we are called to be productive, we are called to reproduce after ourselves in terms of expending all our energies and focusing on our potential making sure that the fat of our potential is burned and everything is expended and we are becoming productive in other words we are becoming productive in the thing that we were supposed to be productive at in the first place you see the point is that we can actually do very many things and i know there's this scripture that i was up against the other day and uh, when i said so it became a title of one of my podcast episodes that you cannot do everything you want to do you cannot be anything you want to be <laughs> it's a very controversial thing even facebook banned that episode from airing i had to figure out some ways of come making it come alive but the thing is that you can do just about anything. I mean, you can do very many activities in a day. But when the day comes to a close, your heart will give you feedback. Whether you are productive or not, you will know. And I know you can dull that conviction that tells you today you just wasted it, man. Today you just spent quite some hours that you could have been productive you just spend those hours wasted them doing things that didn't really matter 
I am not necessarily calling us to this rudimentary life where we are from point A to point Z. I mean, we are just waking up and we are working throughout and so on. You can be productive when you are having a conversation with your child. You can be productive when you are in silent communion with your spouse. You can be productive when you are meditating. You can be productive when you are doing some physical exercises. You can be productive when you are doing absolutely nothing. So I'm not saying that productivity is all about work and work and work. I'm saying productivity has to be linked to efficiency and effectiveness. Doing what we are supposed to do but doing it well. People normally tell us that we should be in the moment. We should be present at all times in the moment. I think the worst thing that you can do and I, I, I've done this before. There's a time that uh, when I was dating my wife, she took me out to watch a comedy show and uh, I was very incorrigible at that moment because at the moment that we were watching the comedy show i was on my phone texting someone and it didn't go down well with them that moment was not a moment of productivity i was in the right place with the right person probably supposed to be doing the right thing but i wasn't in the moment i wasn't present in the moment So one of the things that you should do and I'm going way ahead of myself one of the things that we should find ourselves doing is to be present in the moment Michael W Smith is a Christian gospel artist he sang a song and said this is your time this is your chance live every moment leaving nothing to chance if we can practice that attitude of being present in the moment at all times i do think that we can be productive in one way or another and of course i'm qualifying it by saying that what you're doing should be what you should be doing in the first place otherwise you can be present in the moment but what you're doing is not necessarily what you're supposed to be doing It's a critical thing ladies and gentlemen it's a very critical thing <laughs> if we talk took stock of how we are spending our lives in the view of being productive on a daily basis we will be astounded as to how much time we lose daily doing things that we were not supposed to be doing in the first place activity filling our lives from the moment we wake up to the moment we sleep we've been engaged in activity after activity after activity but the question is are those activities productive and the problem is this that we've learned we've made it a culture inculcated it into our habits to such an extent that we can do activities from day 1 to the day of the last day of the month and we repeat it for the whole year just doing activities but not really gauging to find out wait a minute should i have been doing this thing in the first place and we go having this most important resource which is unrecoverable which is time once time has gone you cannot recover that time and this time has gone i don't know 5 years has passed 10 years has passed 20 years has passed if you put yourself to task and ask yourself have i been productive in my years have i been productive in my time you will be astounded if you are really empirical if you are really inquisitive about this you will be astounded with what you will find out there's someone who analyzed how much time we spend doing different types of activities and they came up with interesting statistics i think someone say that we spend x number of years sleeping by the time we die x number of years on the phone x number of years on uh, the restaurants eating okay x number of years talking to our family and so on you'll be astounded how much time cumulatively is spent in our years 
And the question that I want us to be starting to ask ourselves is this, are we being productive in all these pursuits of life? Every moment we are drawing breath, is it worth it? Is it a breath of quality? I'm not talking about oxygen, quality in oxygen and so on, but I'm talking about the commensurate activity that we are doing while we are breathing. Is it worth it? Is it valuable? Does it add value to ourselves? Does it add value to the life that we are living? And so on and so forth. So, starting the previous episode yesterday, we started looking at some of the ways that we can begin to be productive. And I think the very first thing that we need to understand is what does it mean to be productive? And we need to understand, I've said this in one of the series that we've done in this episodes, in this uh, podcast, that there is an intention of the divine around our lives. We are, we are just not living for the sake of living, not just existing for the sake of existing. Yeah, not just existing so that we can be able to pay bills and survive and make it in life. There is actually some things that we were equipped to do, some things that we were called to do. And so when we're talking about productivity, it's not just about activities that we have finished and we've done them well. It is about activities that we were called to do, we were supposed to do in the first place, and we actually did them. If you looked at productivity from that angle, would you have a score of above 50% of productivity? I don't know mathematics, but you, you know what I'm saying. If you're to gauge on a scale of 1 to 10, would you say that you've been productive in your life? How would you say you've been productive in your life these years that you've been alive? Just all of us, no matter our age bracket, each age bracket has its own productivity to carry out. But once you become an adult, you're supposed to start fortifying yourself. Actually, you've been fortifying yourself by the help of the society and maybe by the help of your parents. And maybe even if you did not have parents and things have gone so bad in your life, but the formative years are supposed to build yourself up, to fortify yourself up so that you can mature, become um, becoming a productive human being. So that at the end of the day, people will say Lawrence was here. And they can only say Lawrence was here because of what Lawrence did. He did what he was supposed to do in the first place. He inspired hope. He enriched lives around the earth, around the world. That is his life signature. So productivity is basically about your life signature. If someone asked you today, what is your life signature? What are you going to tell them? Remember, your life signature is something positive that you do to help society because of that is the way you are built. That is the way you are wired. You are prepared. You are equipped that way so that you can operate that way so that you can help society to be valuable, to be a better place. So on a scale of 1 to 10, have you been productive? What is your life signature? In the previous episode, we saw that the very first thing that will cause you to be productive is to stop all the traffic and ask yourself the question about productivity in your life. Find out if you're productive or not. And if you are not, you start analyzing from there. Do not ever be comfortable being comfortable doing what you're not supposed to be doing just because it is an activity. And there's this thing that we normally do. Let me just give you it, uh, give it to you as an example. We go back to school. We go back to school because we will need to earn an extra degree or add some capacity academically so that we can improve our chances of getting a better job or maybe just even improve our chances of getting a job in the first place. Is that really productivity? You, you, you get my, my argument. I am not against school. Okay, I am against doing the right thing. The degree you got in social studies, was that the degree that you're supposed to get in the first place? Were you supposed to go to school in the first place? People normally give this example of Steve Jobs did not go to school. Uh, um, Bill Gates did not go out to school. I don't know who else did not go to school and so on and so forth. But you see, the essence of those guys not going to graduate school it is not because of school 
not because of hating school no it is because of productivity because weighing on the scales they would rather pursue an idea that is ripe whose time has come than go to school because school is what you're supposed to be doing as an activity during that time of your season in life and we find ourselves and i know this is controversial people might be saying yo lawrence you're just speaking this because you you you, you you're not a guy who has a degree and so on and so forth that's okay but the thing is you can find yourself pursuing some things just for the sake of pursuing them but you're not being productive in them <laughs> it is possible to waste 20 years doing the thing that you're not supposed to be doing because someone told you that that is what you're supposed to be doing and meanwhile in your spirit and in your heart there's some things that are keeping you know they're supposed to come out but you keep dulling the senses you keep dulling the senses you keep you know not listening to that inner voice that still small voice that tells you wait a minute why don't you do this and why don't you consider doing this probably you are scared but you just want to conform you just want to be in this aura where you're doing what other people are doing so that you can be comfortable it is actually uncomfortable to be productive because for the most part you being productive will mean going against the grain i remember reading somewhere in les brown's book live your dreams where he talks about this guy who is absolutely talented i mean he is gifted academically in fact his parents earmarked him for medical school in fact he was even in medical school i think the second year or something that, like, like that And so he gets out of medical school and goes to his parents and tells them that I have decided to quit school because I think I have a talent in making people laugh. I want to be a comedian. And they laughed at the guy and they said, "Stop joking, man. I mean, uh, get get serious." And he said, "I'm dead serious. I mean this." And he said, "You know what's funny?" This is what they said. You what what's funny is this. Let's go and tell your friends what you're just telling us. That is what's funny because they'll laugh at you and they'll call those guys in lab coats to check your head because your head looks like it's not okay. Long story short, he did quit medical school and do not try this at home, brothers and sisters. I am talking about productivity. Do not do things because you've seen someone else doing it. I see very many kids these days about in entrepreneurship circles saying that, you know, Steve Jobs did not go up to university and all those guys did not go up but they were rich. They were rich because they had something to do with productivity. They did not quit school to do nothing. They quit school to pursue stuff. That is being productive. So This guy thought that he would quit school and go and do comedy and that's exactly what he did and he became a very successful comedian a very happy person and so on he was uncomfortable i mean it is uncomfortable to be productive because at some point in time it is not universally accepted anyway i'm winging this too much but the first thing that you need to do is this when you realize that you're not being productive and by the way you need to You need to come to that level where you need to know are you being productive or not but whose metrics are you using because you can actually use the metrics of society if we were to go with the metrics of society i'm telling you god has failed very many people because the metrics of society they say that productivity is all about you going to school to the highest echelons of school and making sure that you have the degrees and you perform highly and then after that you are able to be employed at a high blue chip company and all those things that is how society tends to gauge use those metrics to gauge productivity but that's far from it productivity is about what you are meant to do and actually doing it efficiently So when you find that you have not been productive in your life the very first thing that you need to do as we discussed in the previous episode is to stop all the traffic and start asking introspective questions to unearth areas where you've not been productive and the worst thing you can do 
is to be comfortable in your unproductivity to be comfortable in going through life through a circle or a cycle or a rut or a system of just doing activities for the sake of doing activities there's got to be some insight so from now henceforth everything that you're involving involving yourself with get some insight into it first i normally tell this to christians you find a christian going waxing eloquent praise the lord hallelujah ask the guy what do you mean hallelujah what is hallelujah is it english what what does it really mean he has got no clue but he's all over the place with that spiritual verbiage what is the insight behind it why do you praise god why do you worship god why do you pray to god why do you go to church every single sunday what is the insight behind it see finding the insight behind what you're doing is the first step to leading you to be productive today even as i come to a close of this episode very sweet episode what is the next thing that you should do if you're going to be productive it is a simple thing once you've stopped all the traffic and started to, to pause and to reflect about your productivity the second thing that you need to do is to ask to seek and to find ask seek and find if the life you are living is not a life of productivity as it ought to be the next logical step to take is not to continue with your activities i know this sounds a bit counterintuitive and controversial i am not asking people to stop living and stop working i am saying to stop doing things without insight so stop doing things without having a meaning without having a why Why are you doing this podcast Lawrence? I am doing this podcast to inspire hope and enrich lives worldwide. There is an insight behind doing what I am doing. It is not so that I can get likes on Facebook. I have tried really to get likes on Facebook. Sometimes I belabor my points on the podcast and just two people per day download the podcast. But that's fine. If I was doing it for likes I would have been discouraged long time ago but I'm doing this to inspire hope and enrich lives worldwide in other words some one person can land on episode number 183 for example 166 for example and it does something for them it inspires them it encourages them it makes them to be bold and courageous and take a step in their life and maybe enlightens them that's the reason i'm doing this podcast so you seek to find what is the what is the insight behind the things that you are doing take a break from life's activities if you have to and when you read this autobiographies and these biographies of these huge time guys there is that connotation of them stopping all traffic and going to seek to find some answers we read about steve jobs going to the middle east eastern religion and all that stuff to find himself to find some insight i don't know what he found in there but it's an enlightened thing and i know i'm treading on dangerous water here it is an enlightened thing to draw even jesus himself by the way it says early in the morning while it was still dark he withdrew from people and went into a quiet place and there he prayed there he meditated there's got to be the seeking there's got to be the asking there's got to be the finding the reason as to why we do not find is because we are not looking we are not seeking we're not asking take a break learn to have this this periodic breaks that you take from life and you just center yourself just get some direction just get some why are we doing these things why are we alive why are we why am i working at microsoft 
Why am I working at life signatures? Am I supposed to be working there in the first place? And even if I am there, the thing that I'm doing, what is the insight behind it? Am I doing it just so that I can put food on the table? Is it is it that is that all there is? Start asking yourself those questions. Start asking yourself these life searching, deep seated questions. Why was I born? Do you know you can ask that question nearly at every turn of your life? And there is an answer to that question. It is not a negative answer. Probably people normally ask that question from a negative point stand, standpoint, especially after going through some tough situations in their life. They are asking it regrettably. Why was I born? But no. That question is a very powerful question that should be asked from a positive angle because it has an answer. It has an insight. That insight that you get from that question is an insight on your productivity. Why was I born? Why were you born? Ask yourself, what is my life's assignment? There is an answer to that question. And once you ask that question, the answers start popping up in ways that I cannot say. I mean, they are not immediately apparent and they are not the same ways. God is so unique. I mean, every one of us will have our, a different way that that question is going to be answered. What is my life's assignment? What am I equipped with? And that's a very easy question to answer. Some of you, you know you are equipped with a lot of wisdom strategically, administratively. Some of you, you know you're equipped with a lot of compassion for people. Some of you, you know you're equipped with a nice tongue. You can negotiate some of you can inspire people. Some of you can build projects and build businesses. What are you equipped with? Because what you are equipped with is what you're supposed to use primarily so that you can be productive. Either you use it or you increase its capacity. Anything that you are equipped with is supposed to be directly connected to your productivity. You cannot be equipped with this language, with this way of working with words to inspire people and you don't inspire them. And you find that you've taken a job in accounting, which means you need to lock yourself in some corner somewhere, cracking numbers. Maybe you can be able to do that, but are you being productive in life really? See, what you're equipped with is supposed to be connected with what you are called to do so that you can be productive and ask yourself a question like what is the most exciting thing to do there is an answer to that question ask you ask yourself this question what can i take away from the boredom and from the unproductivity what can i learn when i am bored when I'm being unproductive, what, what, am, what is being communicated to me? Ask yourself, what is my purpose on earth? Oh, when is the last time you asked yourself that question? Probably you don't have an answer to that question because you've not asked hard and long enough. You remember that story of the guy who asked his guru. And by the way, the word guru means, gu means good and, and I think ru means bad. <laughs> yeah. uh, let me not mislead you. But I think it, 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 it means someone who has experienced both sides. Of life and so they're wise enough and so someone asked his guru what is the secret of being successful and the guru took him to a river I believe and held his head down that water in the river and initially it felt like this guy was joking the guru was joking with him until he realized he wasn't joking and fran frantically started wanting to free himself from this hold under the water because he needed to breathe and so the guru told him, if you can go after life with the same tenacity that you used to free yourself from my grasp or my grip as I was holding you under the water, then you're going to be successful. So ask yourself that question of your purpose in life with that tenacity. There is an answer that you're going to get from it. And then ask yourself, whose life can I touch positively? Because I believe and I'm giving you insights into my book, Discover. This thing about people, every single one of us, we have an audience that we've been sent to. And the word audience is in quotes. Audience is not necessarily the people who are listening to you, but 
a president's audience is the subjects so or the, the the countrymen, citizens, patriots. That is the audience of a president. The audience of a mother is the children. This is a time I wrote to my mom. My mom is a primary school teacher, retired. And I wrote to her from the depths of my heart and I told her, I believe you are not called to be a teacher. Because I saw the way she raised us up. I said, I believe you are called to be a mother. I believe that is the primary function of your existence. She did a tremendous job. So you ask yourself these questions and the answers you're going to get, they are going to give you the direction that you need to take in your life. So that from now henceforth, even as these answers come and you start applying these answers, because you're not sent to anyone, to everyone, you're sent to a specific group of people. When you start applying these answers in your life, guess what? You start becoming productive. Insight is what you need. Get insight, get understanding, get wisdom in all you are getting. Get wisdom, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. So look for wisdom. Look for wisdom that deals with your productivity. But you see, if you just find yourself going around life doing things for the sake of doing things because you've got to pay rent and you've got to put food on the table and clothes on your back and you've got to take your girlfriend out, you can do all those things all day long. But at the end of the day, you're not being productive. So I beseech you, find insight to your life. Find questions that you can ask that can lead you to insight. Look for it like hidden treasure. Look for it like like gold. If you seek for it like for hidden treasure, then you will find it. You will understand it. And then you start applying the wisdom. See, wisdom is application of knowledge and facts. It is not just about knowledge, getting gathering knowledge. Life is not just about gathering knowledge all along. It is about having insight and living life with insight. And that's why a man can live for 33 years. And 2,000 years plus later, the whole wide world is still being affected with his life. 33 years. He just lived for 33 years. Jesus Christ. And I know he's a divisive figure. Today you talk about Jesus Christ. People want to shut you up, shut you down. But it's true, this man had insight in his life. How many times did he say, I am? How many times did he identify the insight behind what he was doing? He said, I am the bread of life. He said, I am the door. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I am the living word. I mean, he said very seven times he had insight to his life. And you and I need to get insight into our lives as we live it. I mean, it's a sad day when, as human beings, and I'm taking a lot of time here, but it's a sad day when, as human beings, just live for the sake of living. And we have no insight whatsoever to why we are living. So I'm inviting us, even as I come to a close of this episode, I'm inviting us, to answer these questions. Answer any one of these three questions. Number one, why was I born? Number two, what is my life's assignment? Number three, what am I equipped with? Number four, what is the most exciting thing to do? Number five, what can I take away from the boredom and the unproductivity around me? And number five or six, what is my purpose on earth? And then lastly, Whose life can I touch positively? Ask yourself any one of those three questions and give yourself succinct answers. Ladies and gentlemen, that will be insight enough for you to be productive for the rest of your life. I hope I've done justice to this episode and I hope you enjoy it and I hope you'll be as reflective as possible uh, as you're listening. Thank you so much. Until tomorrow, bye-bye. A special shout out to my mentor, Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University, found at mastermindmentor.com, who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you, Jeff.
Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.